Welcome back. I uh, wanted to talk a little bit about Silkypix white balance. Um, I don't want to go over white balance itself. Hopefully uh, at this point everybody knows how white balance works and it's pretty similar across different raw converters. I do want to talk about some of the features that Silkypix had. They're a little bit different. Maybe show some quick tips or, tip, or tips. Um, you get this white balance by clicking on this little uh, button right here. Um, by default it tries to use the camera settings you have set so whatever However, it interprets uh, what you have your camera's white balance set to is how it will do its initial render. Um, there are a couple auto settings. Um, you can try these out. They're fine. Um, and a whole bunch of other um, values. It's a pretty uh, nice list. Um, but quite frankly, my favorites are either using one of the great balances or the um, skin tone tool, which uh, we'll get to in a little minute. Or the sliders. Uh, there's a color temperature slider um, ranges from 2000 Kelvin to 90,000 Kelvin. It's uh, pretty standard. Its values are pretty similar to set values you would see in like Lightroom. So daylight is somewhere around um, 55, oops, 55, 55, 5500. Um, Color deflection is how magenta or um, how magenta or green the image is if there's tint. Um, dark adjustment adjusts. I haven't found a lot of use for this. Um, um, I can see it happening sometimes in deep shadows. You sometimes get things that are a little magenta or a little green. You can use this to adjust. Um, multi light source adjustment is actually kind of neat. I'll show you this image here. Um, this was at the I believe the National Gallery or the Portrait Gallery. Actually, this is National Gallery in uh, Washington, D.C. Um, you can see you have a couple different lighting sources going on. Um, with multi-light source compensation, it actually tries to balance out different light sources. So as I pull this up, you can see, or you should be able to see, that this um, gallery back here, which is very blue from the from much cooler light that was coming in, it's kind of neutralized itself. So when this works, it's really cool. Um, when it doesn't work, you'll sometimes see some weird uh, um, glowing edges that are kind of ugly. But in this particular case, it worked out very nicely. Uh, so that's multi-light source compensation. A um, couple other things to show you. Um, so you do have the kind of classic gray picker button, which is not. There we go. And that you click on that, you click on something that you think might be neutral, and it should adjust the colors um, based on that value. Maybe it's a very small change in this case. Um, the next uh, interesting tool is the skin color picker tool, and this will adjust not only the colors and try to balance them based around what things a reasonable skin tone should be. It'll also adjust the overall exposure to try to match that. So if you were to pick a shadowed area of skin, you will be sorry because it will try to raise that up um, into the mid-tone areas just to make the skin look nice. So don't do that. Pick instead like a highlight area of the skin and uh, in this case, I think it made his skin way too green, um, so this is maybe not the best um, example. We can try again, though, on a um, lighter, more neutral, not as red portion of his nose. Um, in this case, it's not working as great. Um, you may have to do some trial and error if the skin tone is really critical to you. But try to pick if you do a lighter area. Um, I think that this is making your skin a little too green in this particular instance, so I'd try to raise that up a little bit uh, because this guy's skin was, you know, he was a sailor, and so his skin was kind of red in the summer. So um, the other thing I wanted to to uh, go over, kind of show you, um, is that. White balance, you can still use white balance if you've chosen, either gone into the monochrome tool or picked a monochrome uh, color.
color we have. So if we go into the monochrome, this is a, actually looks pretty decent as a monochrome. Uh, we can go in back in and we can move the color temperatures up and down and you can see it's changing how uh, kind of the brightness, how different color colors are being adjusted in the black and white so um, this is a nice way to do some adjusting adjusting in your black and whites um, is to actually go in through and uh, uh, make it monochrome but then use your um, uh, white balance to adjust how the colors are um, being converted into black and white so I hope, uh, I hope this was of value to someone. Feel free to like these on, uh, on YouTube there. And uh, if you have any comments or questions, feel free to, uh, to add them. Uh, certainly love hearing feedback. And I hope that, again, this was helpful for you.